You're tuned in to Nerd Overload, your weekly show for video games, movies, TV shows, comics, tech news, and more. Now your hosts, Cody Pinnock, Samantha Cross, Sam Dunham, and Josh Harrison. Hey everybody, welcome to Nerd Overload, the pop and geek culture show that's practicing its improv today. I need a place, a location, and an occupation. Place and a location are the same thing. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, and. Yes, <laughs> yes, and. Anyway, I'm Cody. I'm Sam. I'm Josh. I'm Samantha. Oh boy, we have a great show for you this week. We have a bunch of news to go over that we're going to uh, improv a little bit about. But first, yes, let's, yes and. <laughs> yes, and. Let's talk about some things we've been uh, checking out. <laughs> a place and a location. A place and a location. <laughs> Um. <laughs> the place, New York City. The location, New, New York, York City. City. <laughs> the occupation, New Spider- York City. <laughs> Spider Man. Okay, yeah, let's talk about the Spider Man game. Spider Man is not an occupation, it doesn't pay. It's a, I guess it's a volunteer. It's a volunteer job <laughs> if you want to get technical. <laughs> occupation, Octavius Industries. There okay. you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so yeah. you guys have played the uh, new Spider Man game, right? A lot. Okay. <laughs> I haven't played it like a lot, but I've played it. Well, then let (laughs) us talk a little bit about it. Oh man, it's so good. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's amazingly good. Like spectacular, even. You you could say that. You could say it's amazing. You could say it's spectacular. Astonishing. (laughs) Ultimate web of. (laughs) That one doesn't quite work. (laughs) But Uh, it's a really really good action game. open Open world action game. With Spider Man, and it's like a very big blockbustery, high, looks really expensive to make video game, <laughs> <laughs> and it works. Yeah. Oh it, man, does it work? So there's no like old j- Spider Man jank like a lot of those old Spider Man games. Oh no, you feel you feel like Spider Man, no fooling. Like I'm not exaggerating here. Really, like the web slinging is fantastic it's so fun it feels just fun just to web swing yeah i haven't had this much fun just controlling a character in the game in a game since mario odyssey i would say i would say it's even more fun i would put it right up there with it i was i was getting definite new donk city vibes from just exploring (laughs) new york city okay excellent excellent i mean there are a lot of construction sites yeah (laughs) I mean, it doesn't help that they're both kind of new. One is New York and one is a parody of New York. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a, it's similar vibes to exploring New Donk, I felt like. Oh, and here's the thing I love about it. Versus, like, say this game versus, like, Arkham City. Where, like, the Arkham games are very good Batman games. But Arkham City always felt like it. you have the places of Gotham City, but not the life of Gotham City. Yeah, they always have some reason why there's nobody there. Yeah. Magic gas or like Yeah. <laughs> or it's 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 a new prison area. It's a prison that's a city, which makes perfect sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the New York in Spider Man is alive. Yeah. Like people are talking, people are doing things, they yell at you if you come swinging by too close. I've seen the uh, the finger guns where people where Spider Man will walk down the street and just like point at people. Oh yeah. Some of the best stuff, though, is when you do the fast travel and there's like a cinematic of Spider-Man riding the subway in his costume. I've never even done that. I didn't know he did that. Yeah. And he's like (laughs) checking his phone. Sometimes there's like a dude sleeping on his shoulder. Oh, that's awesome. I've heard that uh, the... They take a couple of like liberties with the uh, setting of the game, kind of like they set it a little bit in the future of like possible future of Spider-Man where he's like not working for the Daily Bugle anymore. And, yeah, like, he's, like, he's like 23 years old. He's been Spider-Man for eight years. OK, it, it's definitely an alternate universe Spider-Man mm-hmm. because there are certain events that haven't happened. Yeah, there is no Green Goblin. There is no Doc Ock. Well, he's like the mayor of New York, right? Norman yes. Osborn is. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I've I I haven't played the game yet, but I've heard a lot of reviews and stuff about it. Does J. Jonah Jameson have a podcast? Yes, he does. <laughs> it's, it, it's a podcast, but it's almost like a almost like an NPR radio kind of thing. I've yeah. heard it's it's comparable to like parody Alex Jones show, all about yeah. how oh. much he hates Spider Man. Oh, yep. it's definitely what it is. Oh yeah. my god. Okay, it's called Just the Facts of J. Jonah Jameson. And awesome. he has people call in and like they're like, well, Spider Man's not that bad. He say he saved my dog. Or he's whatever. a menace. Yeah, he's, he's a menace. 
you're obviously traumatized, caller. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, and it's always after like some kind of like event in the game. It's like he'll comment on something. Oh really? Like there's some, and there's a lot of side quests, and some of them are just dumb. Like I was chasing pigeons around for this <laughs> dude who has like a a like a pigeon thing on a roof of a building. It's so annoying. Oh, I wow. hated it. So Any excuse to like go around the city and do stuff though is fun to me. Oh no, it's great. Uh, the first time I was swinging by and I accidentally went through Central Park, I hated it because you can't. Yeah, there's re- nothing to. It's really hard to swing. Like you can swing from the trees, and it's it's annoying. Like the the webbing web swinging actually makes sense because mm-hmm. there's nothing above you for you to to web onto to swing. You can't swing. It's not like the other games where he's like. There's something, from air. there's something off screen. You just don't see it. I'm swinging. Huh. Like, he actually swings off of objects in the environment. Interesting. Like when you're like swinging past buildings and stuff, you'll see like this little icon where it's going to show you where possible like web locations are. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Um, like you can do perch, perching on ledges and stuff and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's um, some of the combat feels a lot like kind of like the Arkham games. Yeah. It, it's like, I mean, I guess if it ain't broke, don't fix it. A lot of air juggling, though, too. Oh, yeah. That's like my favorite thing to do, though. Because you get a bunch of melee enemies and they can't do anything. You're just in the air punching their buddies. Yeah. <laughs> I've also heard the voice acting is really good. Like, uh, Yuri Lowenthal does an excellent job as Spider Man. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. He's pretty, he pretty much nails, like, out of high school, like, early adult. I would say Peter he's. He, I, actually, I think he's out of college. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, like, middle, like, yeah. nearing 30, like, or 25, 26 yeah. year old. Yeah. Um, yeah. All the voice acting is really good. Like even to some areas where you think the voice acting wouldn't be as important is still good. Oh yeah. It's, it's top notch cinematic quality stuff. Well, that's excellent. Um, there's a lot of references to a lot of stuff. Yeah. There's like, there are landmarks all over the city, both real and in from the comics. Mm-hmm. You gonna play as Mary Jane for a minute? Oh, that's cool. That's minute. like the first time that's happened. Yeah, that's really yeah, cool. Actually, you do that a few times. Really? Yeah. Oh, right on. She's a she's a uh, reporter, reporter for, in this for the bugle ver- in this version. Oh, okay, yep. that's cool. Yep, she's a reporter for the bugle. Awesome. There's another mission where you take uh, take over as another character, but I don't think I want to go there. Yeah, don't. It's Please. kind yeah. of spoiler. Please don't spoil it. Yeah. And I and you mentioned there's a whole bunch of different things like Easter eggs and stuff. Yes. Um, one of my favorite ones that I've heard again, I haven't played the game, but I heard uh, they make one sly reference to Venom, where someone is like, you know, they invite Spider Man to like a a party or something like that. It says, so do you, do you have a black and white suit? And Spider Man kind of goes, uh, yeah. um, <laughs> yeah, uh? I remember that. Yeah, I haven't I haven't heard that one yet. It was in a cutscene. You probably heard it. You just didn't catch it because it's in an early cutscene. Oh, I don't remember at all. I think it's when he's talking to Yuri. Oh man, Spider Cop. Spider Cop. Half Spider. (laughs) (laughs) Half Man. Oh Cop. (laughs) I love his Spider Cop. He talks to uh, Captain Yuri uh, Watanabe uh, of the NYPD, Mm -hmm. and like he always does this grizzled cop voice, and she hates it so much. (laughs) Like she wants to, like she hangs up on him all the time every time he does it. (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. Uh, some of the jokes are just really good, like just the quips and stuff. Yeah, after I'd heard, I I got Dragon. This came out the same time as Dragon Quest, mm-hmm. and I'm like, of course, I'm like, well, I'm going to get Dragon Quest because I love that franchise, and I do too. And then everybody starts going on and on about how great Spider Man is, uh, and then finally we're like, we got to get Spider Man, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, it's going to be good, but is it really as good as everybody's saying it is? And it is. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's the first time I got hyped up for a AAA title. And it, well, I wouldn't say the first because God of War was really good too, but. I think it's, be- this is better than God of War by it's, a it's, long It's shot. definitely more fun. Yeah. I, I like God of War, but I don't think it's, it's not as good as. No, 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 no. It one, <laughs> it's like, one, it's like, you can't beat this huge open world of New York. Yeah. You really can't. But, and, and while Kratos' axe is fun to throw. That's about it. The rest of it's just action game. Yeah, uh, <laughs> one of my one of my favorite things I love to do in the game is because I completely maxed out the uh, the web slinging tree. Well, the web slinging combat tree, the first one on the left. Yeah, and um, I love ripping guns out of people's hands and beating them with them. <laughs> <laughs> or when they have those big brute guys, I'll web them up and throw them at people. <laughs> 
Nice. There is a wrestling suit yeah, oh, from yeah, his a, wrestling match. Oh, of, right on. There's yeah. a ton of suits. Yeah, and it's like a Spider-Man luchador looking mask. Oh, excellent. I thought of you when I saw excellent, it. Excellent, excellent. Um, That's cool. Its special power is it allows you to web throw people without having to wrap them up. Nice. Oh, nice. Like, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, man, that's, like, my favorite thing to do. I should buy that suit. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a Spider-Man noir. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which um, makes it so they can, uh, enemies can't alert their friends when you're stealthing. Nice. Wasn't there a, a Spider-Punk, too? Like, there, is saw, a, there is a Spider-Punk. Well, has, like, a Sonic attack or something like yep, that? Yep, yep. Uh, the icon looks like a, a guitar, so I don't know if it actually is a guitar or did you just do it. Oh, I haven't used the I haven't used the suit, so I don't know. There's a I saw there's a cell shaded one that makes it look like a cartoon, like cartoon Spider Man. Oh, I, cool! I haven't seen that one yet. I I saw a picture of it on Twitter. It's very cool. It really pops out out against the realistic background. <laughs> um, it sounds like the it sounds like the uh, um the eight bit Mario outfit from Odyssey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, there are three suits from the from the current MCU cinematic Spider Man. His first homemade suit, mm-hmm. his suit from Civil War, and then the Iron Spider suit from Infinity War. Um, I think I got the one from Civil War. I think it's a Stark suit or something. Yeah, the, yeah. they call it the Stark suit. Yeah. yeah, that's the one I'm using right now. The one I'm using right now is the homemade one because it looks like crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. You get a really swanky all, bl- uh, all black and red suit from Black Cat. Ooh, nice. Um. There's a lot of references to stuff within the Spider-Man universe, but you don't see a lot of it. Like when you, you one of the collectibles you get is like backpacks from when he was in like high school and yeah, stuff. Yeah, he's got backpacks hidden all over the city from when he was in high school and each mm. each one has a little little nugget of Spider-Man trivia or lore inside. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, 55 of them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's another thing I like about this game versus like other games that have like a lot of weird collectibles and stuff. When you unlock the area or whatever with the police monitoring towers or whatever, mm-hmm. it shows you where all the collectibles are. Yeah, like you can just go. <laughs> that they just they just feel fun to collect for some reason. I guess because it's so fun to move around the environment, you don't mind going to. Collect oh yeah, they're like things. everywhere. I found one underneath like a like an overpass bridge or something. Yeah, yeah. There was like a let's see here. There was a shard of a Mysterio helmet. There's like a vial of Sandman sand. There's like all kinds yeah. of goofy or stuff. Or his his underarm webbing from that oh. suit. Oh wow, cool. Or yeah. Aunt May's recipe for wheat cakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spider Man's favorite food. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird. I didn't know that until like a before I like a couple of days before I got the game, <laughs> somebody mentioned it on a podcast or something. Yeah. I think it was a what a cartoon. They were talking about the Spider Man cartoon. I learned that then. And then suddenly I keep seeing it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and also like the cinematics and everything just look amazing. And the game as a whole just looks amazing. It's got dynamic lighting. Um, just, just everything seems nice. Get the game. Get the, it's, it's as good as they say. I guess the biggest complaint I could say is some of the loading screens for certain things. Because you got like this huge open world, but then sometimes you have to, you have to load for some reason. Either like a time shift, like day to night, or oh, yeah. or rain to shine, or vice versa, or whatever. Um, some of the loading screens are long-ish, but not really that yeah, bad. Yeah, I, I never thought any of them were that bad. No, but... no, they're, they're they're definitely not like frustrating. They're just kind of like I was like, I'm just sitting there. I'm like, okay, I want to play. I want to play. I I just got got off of playing uh, Dishonored though, where I'm constantly. Uh, quick saving and quick loading. Yeah. So it didn't feel so bad for me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the game as a whole, it's really good. Um, story seems pretty good. Oh, sometimes controlling Spider-Man when he's crawling up walls, especially if you're climbing down a wall, is a little goofy because the camera and whatnot goes yeah. kind of wonky. Sometimes I have a hard time getting him to wall crawl instead of wall run. Yeah. Uh, I've noticed a lot of times if I just hit the two triggers when I do the 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 webbing to a plate, a place he'll just kind of automatically go to crawl beyond that. Like beyond that, it's really good. Um, it doesn't suffer from like the Arkham, like X-ray vision thing. Mm. Like yeah. you can send out a pulse and highlight guys and whatnot, but it's not like something, something you turn on all the time and it doesn't look, it's just so much better than Arkham. Oh I mean, yeah. I like Arkham. It's a great series, but this, this, I don't know what it is. This is so much better. This is the game that Arkham should have been. Yeah. Especially Arkham City. Does it help that Spider-Man 
it, as in itself has um, a little more levity than Batman because Batman is always like super grim and dark and serious, angry and I think so. Rough. Yeah, yeah. I mean that does help, but I think it, Arkham could have been this good too. I can't explain why it's better. I don't think it's just because it feels more like it makes sense. Not, yeah, yeah, it makes more sense story wise and narratively, and it doesn't feel as stiff. Yeah. Which, I mean, I guess Spider-Man is a lot more agile than <laughs> Batman. <laughs> but And then they didn't have to come up with weird reasons why the city's empty or dumb yeah. plot ideas like, well, it's a city prison. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, the game's really good. It's just, it's anyone with a PlayStation 4 should get it. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's just great. Beyond that, I've, I caught up on the new season of Venture Brothers Oh, we need to do like that. Like the six episodes or whatever they have out now. Okay. It's good. It's good. It's no, good. no spoilers because you no, know. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. It, it's good. Yeah. Um, I've, does it focus on um, Jonas Venture, like senior? Is that what's going on? I don't want to say. But okay, well, then not, don't. It, it's not, uh, Is Dave Grohl in it? <laughs> sort of. I thought I saw a picture of Dave Grohl in it's, it. It's not really Dave Grohl. Is he the new Bowie? No, it's, okay. <laughs> no, it's, he's it's a it's a um an agent of what do they call that organization? The villain organization, the, oh. the Guild of Calamitous Intent. Yeah, yeah. It, it's an agent who looks like Dave Grohl. I was like, <laughs> okay. you turned him into Dave Grohl. He goes, no one can say no to Dave Grohl. <laughs> <laughs> kind yeah. of thing. It, 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 the the it seems to focus more on like there's a, there's a bunch of stuff with Dean. Mm-hmm. Last season had a lot of Hank stuff, but this one's got a lot of more Dean stuff in it. Okay. Uh, and more stuff with, like, the guild and how it interacts with, like, OSI and stuff like that. Oh, cool. Okay. That, and I, I really I really like the the more grown-up Venture Kids. Like, yeah. Like, it's way better than the way they used to be, where they were just kind of just dumb. They kept dying and being cloned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's, I don't know, I, I just like the fact that they're, they're like, aware. Yeah. All right. Oh, that... That montage of them dying in different dumb ways is uh-huh. so that funny. That is good. Though. Yeah, that that's was, a good that episode. Yeah. That's a good episode. Yeah. yeah, I think it's one of my favorite. I think as far as like um, uh, Doctor Orpheus, it's like one of my favorite episodes. <laughs> God, I love Doctor Orpheus. It's yep. powered by a forsaken child. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably why I like Doctor Strange so much. Yeah, because, because of Doctor Orpheus. 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 Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh man all right well hey i can go ahead and do uh my check it out real quick um like i mentioned last week i went down to the uh fritz the night owl wayne stock down at studio oh, 35 okay, last okay. weekend and it was a lot of wayne's world <laughs> it was a lot of wayne and garth i guess i was kind of surprised because they played all of the old snl sketches along with the two movies and i guess i was kind of surprised by how many gags from the sketches made it into the movies huh. like taken one one for one and even there are even some sketches from old wayne's world sketch like snl sketches that were lifted wholesale and put into austin powers huh. like the the bit in austin powers one with the um going down the um like behind the couch and doing like the stairs oh, yeah. and then the escalator that is that word for word that sketch is in uh wayne's world from wow. snl word for word um, the, I mean, that makes sense, I guess. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think I like, well, I know for sure I like uh, Wayne's World 1 better than 2. Oh, I yeah. I think uh, 1 is a more cohesive kind of movie. Yeah. Um, and it kind of focuses more like on the central theme of Wayne's World, you know, Wayne's World and the show and Wayne and Garth and their friendship and everything. Wayne's World 2, um, it feels like an, S, uh, like an Austin Powers movie. Like, I think huh. Mike that- Myers had more input in the scripting on that one, and it feels... Isn't There's that, a lot more uh, fanciful kind yeah, of yeah. elements Is, to isn't it. Isn't that the one where he fights Vanessa's dad? Um, to, yeah. Into? Yeah. Oh, uh, what's her name? Uh, not Vanessa. It's... Uh, um, Vanessa was Austin Powers. Vanessa oh, was Austin right, Powers. Right, 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 right. <laughs> you it's, kept saying Austin Powers. You messed yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah, baby. Yeah. Uh, We're going to do this again. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> but no, yeah. they. That's the the second one's where, where, he, where he fights the, the dad that's in um, like bad dubs yeah yeah and the bad like, kung fu dub yeah but like there's there's so many more like weird like surreal things. surrealist kind of things in the second one 
and like quick cutaways and like costumes and like weird yeah. stuff. Where in the first one, you can kind of tell where like real life meets like the, um, the goofing off, like goofing off like fantasy mode. Like the first one, they know they're in a movie, Wayne and Garth do, but they treat it kind of straight, except for when the script needs them to realize they're not in a movie. Where the second one, everyone knows that this is just an act. Everyone knows <laughs> that this is just a movie and they're just kind of going through the motions a little bit. It's fun, but it's definitely not the same kind of tone as mm, the first one. Yeah. See, that, <laughs> see, that's a good bit from the first one. But the second one, like, I don't know. It was just. Let's do know. the Scooby-Doo ending. <laughs> yeah. I have not seen either one. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> You're really. Oh, man. I, yeah. I love the first one. So either Wayne's World 2 isn't as good or after seeing the first one and then a ton of sketches, you were totally sick of Wayne's World by that point. Either or. Yeah. <laughs> or well. both. Or both. It could be both. Uh, also, it was by the time it was over, it was almost three o'clock in the morning. So <laughs> like, uh, I was ready to be done with anything about 3 a.m. Um, the other thing I checked out and I'll go through it real quick because we don't have a whole lot of time and I don't know how to accurately describe this. Watched a movie the other day called Double Down. It's not about the KFC sandwich where the bread is two pieces of chicken. The movie would make more That's sense if it were sand. about a good the... Sandwich. It I mean, it's a good sandwich. It's a de decent sandwich. I yeah. mean, it's a little greasy. Like, you get it all over your hands. But, but it's good. It's good. No, um, Double Down, the movie, would make more sense if it were about the sandwich where the chicken were, were the bread, bread, bread pieces. <laughs> no, it is... The best way I can describe it is action movie The Room. Like, it is super low budget filmed mostly in like the Las Vegas desert uh, out in the mountains. Uh, you know, created... where it's free. Yeah, right. Yeah. It was uh, created by this guy named uh, Neil Breen. It was written, starring, directed, edited, and like, you know, craft services by Neil Breen, <laughs> who from what I understand is a um, architect and real estate agent in the Las Vegas area that uses his money to fund his short films or his independent <laughs> films. This is not a short film. Um, I wish it was. But he is like a super agent computer genius that stops terrorism, but is also maybe a terrorist because he's a rogue double agent that it gets hired by the U.S. government to thwart his own attack on Las Vegas. And also he has magic healing powers because a ghost gave him a rock in the desert and also he exclusively eats tuna and much of the movie is spent by with him like sitting underneath his car in the desert holding on to three laptops that you're just tapping on while there are two direct tv satellites bolted to the back of his crappy car because he's the best he's the best hacker in the whole world and no one's better than than fantasy nil breen the hacker and also his girlfriend died because the agents, they got too close to him or something. <laughs> and the his female love interest seems very, very reluctant to be in the movie. Like she <laughs> definitely does not seem like she wants to be there at all. She seems sad in every scene. Aww. You can see it in her eyes that she is just <laughs> so sad that she agreed to be in this Aww. crummy movie. Mm. Um, search it out. Don't pay for it. <laughs> it sounds like a fever dream. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, that's the best. Yeah, it is. It's absolutely a fever dream. Um, no, it's the, the best part is actually like the buying process. I didn't, full disclosure, didn't buy it. I found it online. But I've seen like how to buy like his stuff. You have to go to the website that is selling his most recent movie and go on to his uh, PayPal page and buy his most recent movie. And then in the comments write down which movie you want because he's hasn't set up like an online store, <laughs> which is not difficult, which is not difficult, but like, it's like surrealist in the way that you have to get a hold of these films as <laughs> along with everything else. It's insane. And the man has made four films all starring and written and directed by himself in the credits during the, the credits crawl. They had a listing for uh lighting and uh, uh, makeup effects listed as none. <laughs> no, he didn't omit it from the from the credits because he's like, oh, it's a movie. I should put those in the credits. Well, no one did that. So I'm just going to put none next to it. <laughs> Instead of just not crediting it. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Lighting the sun. Yeah, God. <laughs> <laughs> it just, oh, uh, it's so insane. There's a part where he thinks he, he cured a little girl's brain cancer with a magic rock. Also, he's a computer hacker. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like I'm having a aneurysm. I don't know how to describe this film. <laughs> Buckaroo Banzai makes more sense. Buckaroo Banzai looks like a, a straight up documentary. <laughs> Done like like um um the the guy who did the the baseball one or the uh, Ken, Ken Burns. Burns. It looks like a <laughs> yeah. It makes Buckaroo Banzai seem like a Ken Burns documentary. <laughs> Narrated by Attenborough. Yeah. Oh, I. Uh, you guys got to see this. It's uh, it's it's prime movie night material. You guys, it's oh my god! It sounds like the devil. Yeah, Werner Herzog, Buckaroo Monster. All right. Well, hey, we have to go to break, but when we come back, we're going to talk about a whole bunch of news. Hey, we're back. That was the Ramones with the uh, theme to Spider Man because this is the Spider Man episode. Yeah. <laughs> Nerd Overload Spider-Man edition featuring Spider-Man. So yep. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. I mean, your favorite podcast on the web. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get out. <laughs> Leave my house. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, let's get into a little bit of news here. And we do have some Spider-Man news, but we're going to save it a little bit because I think we've said Spider-Man a lot in a very short amount of time. Yeah. We need a break. We need a spider break from the Spider-Mans. Anyway, let's talk about the Captain Marvel uh, costume reveal and like a couple of uh, uh, set photos that came out a few weeks ago or last week, I guess. I'm excited. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Looks super good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Entertainment Weekly had four images come out from this like finalized like stills from the film. One featuring Captain Marvel in the um, blue, uh, red and gold costume, like what her standard costume is going to look like. Her current suit. Current suit. Yeah. There was one where she was... Uh, with Ronan the Accuser and the other members of like his honor guard or something, where yeah, she has yeah. a a modified version of it's like the Kree battle armor basically. That's yeah. what um, Jude Law is in that picture as well. As and Captain uh, Marvel, Mar- Marvel, and it looks like the the Captain Marvel suit, but it's like green and silver and black, yeah. and that's really sharp too. I like that a lot. The third one featured. Oh God! What was she it? She was in nineties. Yes, she, outf- she was in a very nineties outfit. That's right. That's what it was. Her yeah. nine inch nails. Yeah, t shirt <laughs> and and flannel. Yeah. Oh, that one also had uh, Sam Jackson, like uh, D H Sam Jackson, with only one with both eyes. Yeah. Without the eye patch. Yeah, Nick yeah. Fury. Young, young, Nick, young Fury. Nick Fury. Yeah, agent of Shield, not director of Shield. Yeah, or whatever Shield was before Shield. He's gonna be de aged the whole movie, I guess. That's wild wasn't that like the oss or whatever oss yeah 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 and the fourth one which is the most interesting to me is um it featured the antagonist of the films the scroll alien race which, which is, is super surprising a big deal because the scrolls uh historically were tied in with the fantastic four movie rights from what i understand uh the scrolls are an alien shape-shifting race they kind of go into a um uh another like uh, species like interstellar species disguise and, themselves as it kind of and undermine it from the inside and then take over their uh planet and it becomes their new home world they're kind of like locusts a little bit like. yeah also um they're, they're kind of a big deal in the marvel universe they're kind of a huge deal because they pop up like every so often they're they're a constant threat uh but yeah they were they're primarily um fantastic four fil- villains uh the way this works i from what i understand is the mcu is allowed to use the scrolls, but they can't use specific named scrolls like that Super are scroll. like Super Scroll or like any named scrolls that pop up primarily in Fantastic Four books. So it's kind of a weird. It's like the the Watchers in yeah. um, Guardians Two. That one scene where um, Stanley Stan Lee is talking to those guys with the big heads on on the moon. Um, they could use the Watchers, but they couldn't use Utau the Watcher, mm. who is a Fantastic Four character. Yeah. It's kind of a weird loophole that they yeah, have yeah, there, yeah. and it's kind of cool. Uh, I'm so pumped for this film. Now I feel like we said scroll. A scroll, bunch of times. yeah, I know, right? And here's the one thing, like I was really surprised about. Sure. In the first Avengers film, we have the Chitari, mm-hmm. which are like the ultimate books line of scroll men. It was, yeah. And yet we're actually getting the scrolls themselves, so it's like they're kind of retconning things a little bit. Yeah, yeah. The current comics have both 
alien races. It's mm. like the Chitauri is kind of like a uh, uh, offshoot. Yeah, they barely did anything with and the they, Chitauri, and they anyway. barely did anything. Yeah, it's it's they, almost a good thing that they didn't have the scrolls during Avengers One because then the scrolls would have become like just fodder, f- fodder never yeah. used. Yeah, yeah. But I'm excited for it. And they look good. Mm-hmm. They look like scrolls. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. Uh, the one thing that is going to be interesting to me because it deals so closely with the uh, Kree aliens, like the Ronan, the Accuser, the blue and stuff ones, like yeah. that. Yeah, the blue ones. Um, they're big. Uh, like the leader of their race is a thing called the Ultimate uh, Intelligence. The Greater Intelligence. The greater Intelligence. Yeah, and uh, it's basically Zordon. Yeah, it's a brain. <laughs> yeah, it's he's a-, a big face in a tube. Yeah, it's a head in a jar. <laughs> yeah, that makes bad decisions, just <laughs> like Zordon. <laughs> right. But uh, but yeah, Captain Marvel. I'm really excited. Okay, so uh, let's do another captain. Let's do another captain. Yeah, this is more along the uh, rumors line. It's still Marvel stuff, but uh, um, there's a character called Captain Britain in the Marvel comics who is basically like super strong, can shoot energy beams out of his like staff in some iterations. But he, basically, super strong and fl- and can fly. He's basically captain america for england kind of but also can fly yeah um but uh he's kind of a lesser known character everybody from britain can fly just about you didn't know that yeah (laughs) yeah they all have a little bit of mary poppins in them you know (laughs) yeah mary poppins (laughs) y'all but uh but no they um that's a kind of a lesser known character but it's been he's been just this side of like popular enough to kind of be kind of a name a little bit and yeah, he's had a couple books in the last. He's couple had years. a couple books, yeah. And uh, the news is that there might be a movie being produced starring Captain Britain, uh, directed by Guy Ritchie, uh, known for Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. He did the uh, Sherlock Holmes films. Yep. He also the, did the ones with Robert. Downey the Jr. ones with Robert Jun- Jr. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He also did um, Layer Cake. King, not King Arthur. Was it called King Arthur? He recently did an Arthurian legend movie. Yeah, oh, yeah, I think you're right. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. Isn't that yep. the one? Isn't that the one with the the dude from um, Sons of Anarchy? Yes, yes. Yeah, that movie looked awful. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one notwithstanding. Well, yeah, Guy yeah, Ritchie's yeah. A, a really good director. He does a lot of uh, British really good films. British films, really, really yeah. stylish, kind mm-hmm. of incredibly stylish. But yeah, the Captain Britain movie, Ooh, and Snatch. I guess they're also uh, Snatch. Yes, that's the good one. That's the really good one. He's also directing the new uh, Aladdin live action film, which I didn't realize was going to be. Yeah, which is a, a choice. It's a choice. It makes me a little more interested to watch the Aladdin movie. Yeah. Jason Honestly. Statham plays Jafar. That would be great. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? <laughs> I can. And it's awful. Actually, that would not be great. Jason Statham is a is many things, but a charismatic actor is not one of them. Please don't beat nope. me up, Jason Statham. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but Captain Britain is going to be joined by another British uh, Marvel superhero, the Black Knight, who is that's uh, that's a deep played cut by too. Martin Lawrence. <laughs> oh, oh, speaking of deep cuts, <laughs> oh my god, oh my, very nice, <laughs> good work. <laughs> that movie was really bad. Oh yeah, yeah it, was. it was rotten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, I believe I saw it in theaters for some reason. I were, I think I were to the theater and that movie came out. Mm-hmm. I saw that at a drive-in nice. uh, years and years and years ago. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, I didn't pay to see that one. I saw <laughs> something else and it just happened to be on. <laughs> but uh, but no, this is all rumor at this point. But it's... also, Martin Lawrence isn't involved. No, that no. Was, that no. Was the Prob- joke. <laughs> probably not. Mostly not. We could start that Actually, rumor yeah, if you we like. Don't, we don't know. Yeah, yeah maybe. We could, yeah, we could start that rumor. Everybody. <laughs> Martin Lawrence is going to be in the Captain Britain and Black Knight movie directed by Guy Ritchie. You heard it here first. Reprising his role as the Black Knight. As the Black Knight. The yeah, he's, not, Black he's Knight. not even the Marvel one. He's just that one. Yeah. <laughs> God. Also cameoing the Black Knight from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. <laughs> and maybe Michael Knight from Knight Rider. <laughs> There's a guy at my work. Good night, Michael everybody. Knight. <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy on my line who his, his name is Michael Knight. Oh, oh no way! Like I heard, I heard, like I heard it over the radio one day, and I was like, oh, I wonder if he drives a sweet car. Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I had the, I, then I had the Night Rider theme stuck in my head all day. <laughs> nice. I, I, I couldn't get away from it. Yeah. Every time you have to talk to him, just go, Michael. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> yeah. 
<sighs> All right. So um, you guys take one. I've been talking a lot. Don't hassle the Pick off. one. Yeah, don't hassle off. Anyway, yeah, pick a, pick a news, you guys. Pick Final, a news. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles is getting remastered for the PS4 and the Switch. What is that? It's a it's a video game for sure. one. Yeah. Um, it was one from back in the GameCube games. It was a GameCube exclusive that you had to play. Back when Nintendo made you play games weird. Yeah. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. you had to use a Game Boy Advance, another video game system entirely, as a controller for this GameCube game. That's weird. Yeah, it was a very <laughs> convoluted process, but a very good, good game. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they how they remaster it without having a controller with a screen on it. Hmm. Yeah. Unless they make you play it in handheld mode. But I can't. Yeah, they make one person put it in the dock and everybody else is in handheld mode. So you'd have to have five switches. Ooh. Like yeah. one for the main screen and then four for the players. Oh, man. That'd be rough. Well, that would be an ultimate selling. Hey, I'm point. calling it now. They're remastering four swords. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're, they're doing it. They're having it come out on PS4 too. So I don't oh know yeah, yeah. They, yeah. So they probably, probably won't. Do that. They probably won't. But you know, I I never played the game, but everything I've heard about it was that it was excellent. Yeah, it was a very good game that not enough people got to play because of that ridiculous barrier of hmm. entry. It's also just it was also just kind of an interesting entry in the Final Fantasy series anyway. Yeah, because it was just so weird. Different from the formula, I yeah, guess. Yeah, it was kind of it's kind of like a, a dungeon crawler in a way that you play with uh, three other people. Hmm. Yeah, and the the main conceit is there's this big like jar that one person has to carry that you have to stay within the the guardi the bubble around the jar. Mm-hmm. And if you go outside of that, it hurts you a little bit. Huh. So you have to work together to to cart this jar around to get through the dungeon. Interesting. Got to move the payload. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Well, no, I'm looking forward to it uh, coming out. Uh, depending on what uh, requirements you need to play it, I might pick it up. I don't honestly, know. they'll probably just streamline it. Yeah, it'll yeah, it'll, probably. it'll be a lot easier than it used to be. <laughs> yeah, not everybody will have to have a Game Boy Advance and then a special cable that connects your Game Boy Advance to your GameCube. <laughs> wait, 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 wait! Calling it now. They're just making you use Game Boy Advances. Yeah, yeah they're, like, they're bringing gonna, back the Advance. You're gonna no, no, oh. you're gonna have to bring it back. Just go get an old one. Go yeah. find an old one. Oh man, it's the excuse they need to keep 3ds's around. Oh no, oh, yeah, no. yeah. You get the uh, the local play going on your on your 3ds, and it connects to your Switch. Oh, that would be or your PlayStation or your PlayStation. Somehow. Yeah, you'd have for, to do that. For Vitas, everyone has to. Oh have man, a Vita. everyone has to go find a Vita. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, yeah. All right, so hey, we have some really quick hits uh, because I want to come r- swing back around to the Spider-Man <laughs> news. Swing, uh, around. swing. I didn't mean to do that until halfway through that sentence, but uh, <laughs> but I'll take the joke. But let's uh, just touch on a couple things real quick. Uh, Space Channel Five uh, is getting a new game. Is that correct? It's a VR game. Yeah, it's a VR game. A okay, VR Space Channel Five, which uh, that sounds great. Yep, that sounds pretty cool. Same with uh, Everybody's Golf, which I remember Cody you, you talked a little bit about that a yeah, while back. Yeah, it's a great, you? great golf game for PlayStation Four. Cartoony, fun golf. Yeah. yeah, it'll be fun to play in VR. Cool, cool. And uh, there's also a Kingdom Hearts VR, in which they're calling a VR experience. So, so it probably won't really be a game. Yeah. But it'll probably be uh, integral to the storyline yeah. of <laughs> Kingdom Hearts. Like all the Kingdom Hearts games? Where yes. where a phone game is necessary to understand the entire plot line of the the series. <laughs> God, I, I like Kingdom Hearts, but I hate that. I really hate that. Oh, part the storyline is garbage. It makes <laughs> no sense. You don't really need... You get the main the main conceit of it, and that's all you really need. I mean, you how much story needs to go into? Hey, you're you're a Final Fantasy boy, and you fight alongside Disney characters. Yeah, apparently you need like a a giant like a doctorate in Kingdom Heartology. <laughs> <laughs> and even understanding all that, you can't figure out why Donald won't heal you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this game is so convoluted. There are multiple podcasts completely like devoted to explaining the plot line of Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts. Hearts. You know what? We should start one and just call it Simple and Clean. Yeah. Because I love, it, I love that song. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good that's a good one, though. That's a good, yeah. 
Uh, speaking of Kingdom Hearts, there uh, there was a trailer for the main game, Kingdom Hearts 3, that came out here recently. And um, in it, it revealed that along with a bunch of other Disney properties that the characters are going to be going to, Big Hero 6 uh, was one of the worlds that they were going to. Which yeah, is, Yoko, yay. Yeah, yeah. which is kind of cool because... Big Hero 6 was a really cool uh, movie. It was a really cool setting. It's a fantastic movie. And it's technically a Marvel setting. Now, this doesn't mean that all of a sudden, hey, Donald and Mickey and Sora from the Final Fantasy or whatever are going to meet up with with Iron Man Man and Thor. But, I mean, it could happen. Only only if they make them look like um, the, uh, the Disney Infinity figures. No, it looked like the superhero squad show. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. It's the crossover you've all been waiting for. Yep. How about no? Watch, watch. They'll just go to they'll just go to Lego Spider-Man world. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, next up, there was a She-Ra trailer, a teaser trailer for the Netflix show. It looks very cool. Yeah. Looks cool. I'm in. Yeah. Why I mean, not? that didn't really show a whole lot, but. No, we got a good look at the transformation slash costume. So mm-hmm. and the voice acting for at least uh, Princess Aurora, Adora, Adora, Aurora, Aurora. is uh, sleeping, sleeping beauty. beauty. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's all right. <laughs> but uh, but no, I, I'm in. Why not? It's Netflix, so it's yeah. not going to cost anything really in and the long run. I love the the big the hair moment. In yeah, the transformation. that was really That's cool. Really cool. That was really cool. Uh, this next one is kind of a big one. Yeah, it like just happened. And this just happened. We're recording this uh, Wednesday afternoon, and it, this just dropped. Uh, apparently, Henry Cavill, who uh, you know is best known as Superman in the terrible DC. Warner Brother DC uh, shared Cinematic, universe yeah. movies, is no longer going to be a part of them. He has uh, stepped out of his contract with uh, Warner Brothers. Will no longer be a part of the. Justice League movies or any other Superman movies. He's done being Superman. That's big news. Yeah, that leaves a big void in their cinematic universe. It makes you wonder what's going to happen with the Justice League because the, the whole the whole point of like the end of Justice League, the second half of the Justice League movie was we can't do this without Superman. Yeah. <laughs> and now they're going to have to do this without Superman or cast someone who maybe looks kind of like Henry Cavill. Maybe put have him wear a mustache and then CGI it off yeah. just to make it look a little closer. Why don't they just CG Henry Cavill's face onto somebody else? Yeah, oh, there we go. I yeah, that'd be awful. I'm yeah. sorry. Like they did with in, in uh, Man of Steel when they CGI'd uh, Christopher Reeve's face on top of him for like a brief second. Did they do that? You guys didn't know about that? No. Okay, so in the climax of uh, Man of Steel, Superman uh, flies to India and is busting up one of those uh, terraformer things that's turning Earth into a new Krypton. And, um, you know, that's all flashing white lights around him and everything. And for half a second, uh, Christopher Reeve's face flashes over top of Henry Cavill's face. Why? Because they wanted to subconsciously make you go, yes, this is Superman. (laughs) I I guess. Yeah. But it, yeah, if you're looking for it, it, you can definitely see his face kind of morphs for half a second. It's weird. It's very weird. Hey, maybe they can just get a uh, what's his face come back to be Superman. Um, the guy that was in Superman Returns, the Adam from the Arrow Arrowverse. Oh, oh, I forget what his name is. Brandon. Brandon Ralph. Yeah, yeah. there we go. I was gonna say he can get a uh, uh, Dean Kane. Yeah, from the New Adventures of <laughs> Lois and Clark. That's actually my favorite. Um, uh, live action version of Superman. Honestly, uh, I really love that show. It wasn't bad. Yeah, if you go back and watch it sometime. It's it's goofy. It's really oh, campy. Yeah. It's almost like the television equivalent to Batman sixty six <laughs> at, at points. But also, Dean Cain is a super nice dude. <laughs> yeah, he seems like a really cool dude. And uh, he and Terry Hatcher had a great on screen chemistry. Like you believed that they were Clark Kent and Superman. Yeah. Right, Clark Kent and Lois Lane. <laughs> I mean, yes. Clark Kent and Superman. <laughs> yes. Uh. But yeah, that's a big uh. deal, especially since like uh, Affleck has been trying to get out of his his Batman contract for oh, a while. Oh, yeah. Well, are they going to reboot the whole thing? They might have to reboot the whole thing, you know, two years into their cinematic universe. <laughs> oh, my God. Can you imagine? Burn oh, it man. down. Oh, start it they over should just, They should just, they should do that. But then when they do like, when they bring on like a... Uh, uh, 
Jason Momoa for like Aquaman or something, he can make some comment and go, man, it's been a while. You guys look different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Because that sounds like something he would do. Right now, Momoa is like the only one that seems like he really wants to be a part of this whole thing. Right? Well, I guess Gal Gadot Gal. still does as well, but it's she's- but her movie is good. Her movies are good. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, her um, one movie was yeah. good. Wonder Woman 84 yeah. looks good. It looks really good. <laughs> I'm that, that'll be exciting. excited for that one. Um, the, but the, one of the big reasons why Cavill's leaving, uh, Superman is because it, he had conflicts with, um, uh, his, uh, newest project, which is a Netflix adaptation of the book series and video game series, The Witcher. I know nothing about The Witcher. I, I've never read the books. I've been wanting to, but they're really hard to find. Yeah. I guess they, they, I guess they haven't translated many. Cause they're, they're Polish. Yes. Right? They're yeah. Polish. And, um. But the games are fantastic, especially the third one. That yeah, third I've, one's that third one's a masterpiece. I've played all three, but I haven't finished any of them. They're so dense. They are dense. <laughs> also, I hate the control scheme in the first one. So the much. click and yeah. then wait and then click and then wait. Like. And then change your combat style depending on what you're fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah I I love The Witcher, but I don't really see Cavill as as Ger- Geralt. Or Geralt. Geralt. Yeah. I, I I don't. I well, just don't I mean, see it. You know, maybe if they're going off of the novel interpretation of the character instead of the game maybe. interpretation I, of I the mean, character, I mean, maybe yeah. maybe he looks different. I mean, I've but only I seen... I don't know. Yeah, you could be right. I've only seen Geralt uh, from covers and images from the third Witcher game where he's kind of old. Yeah. So that, that might uh, be kind of a stretch anyway. And that uh, and that one really great cosplayer that does Geralt all the time, uh, his name's... I think it was called Maul Cosplay because Darth Maul was his first cosplay. Mm. He looks amazing. He looks like you just pulled him right out of the video game. Interesting. Oh yeah, he did a he did a really cool video the other day where he combined all his costumes huh. Huh. and cool. to to a parody of Make a Man Out of You. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. Why why did my brain flash to Combo Man when hmm. when you said that? Do you remember Combo Man? It sounds familiar. Okay, no, but now I want combos. See that always. That's what it is. He's a combo mm-hmm. superhero. Combos had a licensing deal with Marvel Comics, and so <laughs> there was a a comic book, like a mini comic, uh, that came out with uh, combos back in the '90s, where it had like, uh, you know what? I'm gonna pull up a picture because any whatever you're picturing as Marvel Comics Combo Man <laughs> may look like, it's much worse. I mean, are his arms like segmented combos? Because that's how I would do it. Because <laughs> now I'm just picturing like an arms character with combo arms. Yeah. It's so much worse, you guys. Oh, I hate it. That's Combo Man. Oh, I hate he's it. like he's like composite Marvel. Yeah, man. but not like they're not like fluidly like no, it's you know so... mixed. It's like in hard lines, like every you know cup inch down the picture, like the body, like. It's a different costume. Like he has the it's, hair of the Hulk and then it's like the visor of Cyclops and like the mouthpiece of Iron Man and like the shoulders of Magneto, just his shoulders. Is is that is that the Punisher skull? That is part the, of it? that is the top half of the Punisher skull with the Captain America's kind of arm. Ha, upper torso and and um upper now, arm. Whose crotch did he get? I believe whose crotch is that? I think it's Thor's. Yeah, you know what? I think that's '90s <laughs> Thor's crotch. Because you're right. Because look at the tops; so it looks like Thor's old boots. That, yeah, you're right. Yep, that's what it is. Thor's crotch. Yep. I mean, if you're gonna have any crotch, you should have the crotch of the God of Thunder. You have the uh, <laughs> the Human Torch's hot knees, <laughs> just the knees. But like, yeah, Nick this Fury's isn't a boots. joke. <laughs> it's a real thing. Combo Man is a real thing, you guys. God, this, this is terrible. He's like composite Superman, but vertical and awful more. <laughs> yeah. I like composite Superman. Is that he has Wolverine's stomach? He has the tums of Wolverine. <laughs> He's got Wolverine's abs. <laughs> He's the best at what he does, and what he does is crunches, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> at least it's the brown and yellow Wolverine suit, which is my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if if you gotta pick one segment of one combo man of one superhero, <laughs> it's gotta be that, right? <laughs> Wolverine's abs. I kind of want to cosplay this. I kind of oh. went to a convention as and Combo see, Man and see if anyone gets it. Of we'll all the Marvel, done it. of all the Marvel heroes' hair, he got Hulk. He got hair. he got Hulk's weird hair. I guess it's better than Doc Ock's hair. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true, but not too far off. Okay, no one, from what I could see on a cursory glance of 
Google image search. No one has done a combo man. So mark my words. Yeah. Here, someday. Here you go. That sounds like an expensive cosplay. I'm going to be combo man. You guys, you could just cut up a bunch of costumes that you and, buy and stitch yeah. them together. Like a bunch of <laughs> Halloween costumes, like from the <laughs> Halloween store. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we have about five minutes left in the show. So I want to go ahead and get back into this last Spider-Man story because, you know, we started with Spider-Man. We got to finish with Spider-Man. Uh, there was, um, I don't know. You, what do you guys describe it? This is kind of intro it because this is kind of an interesting okay. thing. There, there's an Easter egg in the Spider-Man game. They might've taken it out by now. I know they were talking about patching it out. I actually have a, a follow up to that. Okay. So keep that in your pocket. Where on the, one of the theater marquees, it says, Maddie, will you marry me? Mm-hmm. And this was a, somebody's actual proposal that they emailed Insomniac Games to put in the game, so they did. And they said, sure. They said, yeah, "Yeah, man, we'll do it. That sounds great. Because it's a cute idea. It's a great idea. Why not? And yeah, it's it's not the first time a game developer has helped somebody propose Mm -hmm. within a video game. Uh, But uh, by the time the game came out, apparently they had already broken up. They had been broken up for five months. Yeah, so it it was a fruitless gesture. Yeah, no, the the early reports was that she had broken up with him five months prior to the game's release and was currently dating the guy's brother. Yep. Uh, And everyone is... Which sounds skeevy. It sounds really skeevy and bad. (laughs) And uh, Insomniac Games... Insomniac? Is that who it is? Yes. Yeah. Uh, they came to the, they went to the guy and said, Hey, whoa, man, listen, we can, we can patch this out if you want. This is, yeah, well, we got a patch ready right now. We can, we could take care of this. And the guy at first was like, no, leave it in. You know what? Maybe someone else is, wants to propose to their girlfriend and her Name name's Maddie. Maddie. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll leave it in there. I saw someone did actually. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, and that's really cool. But, uh, I guess about a week or so after uh, his, he said that he said, you know, maybe can you change it to like, just put my grandma's name on it because like <laughs> she's the one that got me into Spider-Man in the first place. And I think that's what they ended up doing is they patched that out. But, uh, and it makes, you know, makes you think, Oh, this is a really sad story. I feel bad for the guy. It's just a sad kind of botched thing. I don't have much sympathy for this guy. I didn't feel, I didn't feel sad for him at all. Like that stuff happens. Yeah. I didn't feel much sympathy for the guy to begin with. But then there was uh, an mm-hmm. article written from um, where they interviewed the ex-girlfriend. And Samantha, you read this article as well, right? Yeah. So, uh, well, so who, yeah, what was kind it, of the stuff? Where is it from? The uh, article was done in the Houston Press. Yeah. Like the, the Houston mm-hmm. It was like the Houston Press got a hold of the ex-girlfriend. And uh, yeah, what, what, what did she end up saying? Basically, he's a garbage boy. <laughs> 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 she tried to give him a chance. Well, she's like a personal trainer she's not into video games at all to begin with <laughs> and like they've you know been dating since they're like 15 and like moved in together really really young and they just I don't and know. he was like incredibly childish oh, and yeah. kind of verbally abusive and kind of crummy oh, yeah. he's garbage yeah yeah and uh, she's like uh she said that this was absolutely the worst way that anyone could try to propose to her she, she would not appreciate that like in the least because she hated video games and like she wasn't dating the guy's brother. It was like the guy was using his brother as kind of like a, Hey, why don't you go check on my ex and see, just see how she's doing, trying to be a creep and trying to get back in, back in with her. And yeah, what the heck? (laughs) At least he didn't pay for it. (laughs) It's even worse because he scammed the the game company into doing it. Yeah, Insomniac is now complicit in his campaign of creepiness. <laughs> yeah, you know, campaign I mean, he, creepiness. I mean, I guess in the grand scheme of things, what he did is fairly innocuous, innocuous but like, it's still weird and yeah. bad and he shouldn't have done it. It's gross. Also, if your future fiance doesn't like video games, why would you propose to her yeah. in a video game? Like, because he couldn't think outside himself. Yeah, that like, the biggest it, thing that she was about like she had to force him to stop playing video games and <laughs> yeah like that's exactly it you know if you're if you want to commit to someone you gotta take the time to actually get to know what they like and yeah. what they want and like don't just assume everything's about you 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 it's like you'd have to be playing the game and then be like hey look hey, hey look, hey come, hey, hey, come hey, check hey, this thing hey, out come here look at this look <laughs> yeah that's that's awful and i'm i'm glad she's doing better 
Yeah. I'm, glad she, I'm glad she's doing better for herself. I'm glad this worked out the way it did. You know, I don't wish ill on many people, but this guy's a creep, and I'm glad this <laughs> didn't work out for him. I feel bad for is Insomniac for who's now putting in, yeah. the work in to do this for the knob. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I think that wraps up the show so we can go ahead and get out of here. You've been listening to Nerd Overload. Thank you very much for tuning in. You can find us each and every day over at nerdoverload.com. You guys can also find us on most forms of social media, you know, the good ones, you know, no MySpace, on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram. Oh, I wouldn't Instagram. know if I would call Twitter the good one. <laughs> <laughs> I miss MySpace, honestly. Yeah, th- th- these days, yes, I miss the MySpace. <laughs> Yes. You can email us at staff at nerdoverload.com. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Nerd Overload TV. That's right. We're also on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, and just about anywhere else you can find a podcast, you can probably find this show. Also, we have t-shirts. We're still selling those t-shirts, folks. At least three. At least three of them. Maybe more in the future. But right now, there's at least three. Uh, just go to bit.ly slash nerdoverloadt. Or just go to our website, and there's a link to our store up on the top. You should see if you can get bit.ly slash cover your nipple. <laughs> you know what? I'll work on that. <laughs> I will absolutely work on that. We'll see next week. So uh, so anyway, uh, I guess that's it. So uh, thanks for listening, and we'll be back next week. Peace out. <laughs>